Ah, there you are my friends. It's really fantastic to have you all back here again. So today's episode is a real deep look into perks and books. So stick around for that. We're jumping that into we are jumping into that right now, so stay tuned. <laughs> ah, my friends, welcome. So we are in our uh, beginner's guide world and I am sitting on top of a radio tower. This is a new point of interest. It's very cool. So you can just see a bit of the surroundings, a couple of factories. Is there quite an interesting town down that side? I'm quite liking the looks of that, but that's not the purpose of this episode. Today's episode, drum roll please, is dealing with our skills and perk books. So let's get right into it. There are five perk trees. And so the first perk tree we're going to look at is perception. So this perception, you can see it here where my mouse uh, uh, cursor is. Then you've got strength, fortitude, agility, intellect, and then we've got our perk books. So perk books, we're going to look at last. So let's start with perception. Perception obviously deals with eyesight, how well you can see things. So perception is the measure of your sensory awareness. Increasing perception raises the headshot bonus and dismemberment chance with spears, rifles, and explosive weapons. So there are 10 ranks to this. And as you get further down the, into these ranks, I think it's ranks eight, nine, and 10, you need two levels. To rank into them and i think rank 10 is actually three um, if i'm not mistaken so we're currently on oblivious we're level one you're pretty oblivious in the perception department do 200 percent headshot damage and you have a five percent chance to dismember with rifles explosives and spears all right so we could buy that if we want i've actually got one point available then we can go down to level two. You're still unaware of two most things around you. you deal 210% headshot damage and you have 10% to 10 to chance to dismember with rifles, explosives and spears. All right, so we bought that and now we're going to go into observance and you can see it keeps going up. 250% um, to 60 to 70. All right, so once you get to rank 10 of this, you get 300% chance or 300% headshot chance and 50% chance to dismember. Now, with these skill trees, guys, there is no correct way. There is no, this is the best build. This is a wrong build. It doesn't work like that. This works how you want to play. There are some recommendations I can give you. There are some ones that help you more in the beginning. But it all depends on what kind of build you want to play. Do you want to go for an archery build? Do you want to go for a shotgun master? Do you want to not go for guns at all and go for bows? It all depends on what your style of play is. Do you want to mix and match? I'm a personally fan of mixing and matching. So let's go through the skills inside here. So it's divided into different sections. You've got your combat perks, then your general perception perks, and your scavenging perks. So let's go through these. So your dead eye has got five ranks in it. Specialize in taking key name with rifles and wasting your target with an expertly placed bullet. One shot, one kill. So you can get that first by one. Uh, you can hit the broadside of a barn and do 10% more damage with rifles. Craft quality two poor rifles. Aim and reload 10% faster. Unlocks hunting rifle crafting. So with Seven Days to Die, there are multiple ways to get hunting rifles. If you buy this, if I spent the point into this now, I could buy that and I could make myself a hunting rifle, which is really, really nice if I had the parts. Or I could buy the hunting rifle from the trader or I could find it in loot. So there are multiple different ways to get what you want in the game, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. So you go is on, it goes down to rifleman, marksman, sharpshooter, and deadeye. Now, once you get down to deadeye, through all your hard training and countless shooting, you're now a deadeye sniper. It deals 50% more damage, aims 60% faster, reloads 30% faster, and uses 30% less stamina. And you also get a kill streak. Successive kills increase hedge, uh, sorry, successive kills increase damage bonus by 30, 40, and to a maximum of 50%. That is really good. If, you can, if you're really good at the sniper rifle, that really helps. So 
one thing I can recommend is don't go too broad. Focus on one or two of combat perks across the, the skill trees. Don't go for three or four or five. It's really difficult. You only get so many levels. Um, so I tend to focus if like I'm doing a spear build, so I'll focus on putting points into spears or shotguns, whatever that, what I feel like on that playthrough. So demolitions is one of my favorite ones. I love explosives. Right, specialized in explosives to weapons to stun, cripple, and dismember your foes. So if you buy the first rank, which is grenade initiate, grenade, grenadier initiate, sorry, uh, you can increase its damage by 10%, reload by 15%, 10% faster and 50% chance to stun your enemies and 5% greater chance to dismember. You can craft pipe bombs, pressure plates, and cooking pot mines. Uh, the same thing again, but this one you can craft dynamite and uh, hubcap landmines. Uh, this one you can create uh, grenades, which grenades are lovely, and more efficient stacks of gunpowder. So it lets you craft uh, stacks of 1,000 gunpowder, which I, if I remember correctly is 800 coal and 800 potassium, so it's not too bad. Rocket Man. You can now create rocket launchers. Again, increases your damage and your reload speed. And your Demolitions Expert. Stun last longer enemies, craft time charges, contact grenades, and air filter landmines. The time charges are really, really good at, at blowing up doors and things like that. They're also really funny when you stick them into a zombie. It's actually quite hilarious. You can stick them to their heads and watch them run. All right, so javelins are your spears. So you can learn to flick more damage and throw spears further with more accuracy. So you can make a sharp stick. So the first one you can do is you can make quality two. So as you get into all of these, on each one of them. So like if Dead Eye, if you get there, you can now make a quality five sniper uh, hunting rifle or a sniper rifle. However, you can't craft level sixes, which is the top of the line. The reason for that is they fun pimps want you to go find the best loot, uh, the best weapons in loot. They don't want you to make it or you're never going to leave your base. So the best quality, the purple quality items you can only get by looting that is one thing i forgot to mention from earlier all right so we've got that we've got a javelin master so that will let you make quality five javelins and you can do 50 percent more damage and 50 percent more range which is impressive uh, okay now we get down into our general perception perks so the first one is lock picking now from alpha 18 to alpha 19 they have reduced these some perks got outright removed because they felt they weren't adding anything and some got split apart and some had their ranks reduced to be more uh, effective so you didn't have to put so many points into them so many levels um, like a lot of these these were all level fives they the three three and a four or three threes and a four now so lock picking <clears throat> uh, Let's you pick locks. Burglar, you can pick locks 20% faster and a 10% chance or a 10% low chance of breaking your lock picks. And you can make lock picks. Guys, if I can, this is one of the ones that is really useful early game. Instead of spending your time chopping your way into a safe or something like that, making your own lock picks. Really good. Okay. 40% faster and a 20% chance lower to break your lockpicks. Trust me, you're going to break a lot of lockpicks. And 60% faster and 30%. Infiltrator. So there are, there are traps. Uh, even if you make your own traps, like the blade traps or the spike traps, and you stand on it, this helps with that kind of stuff. Uh, you can, you're now a mole. You can move through dangerous traps easier. Loose board traps and la landmines trigger half a second slower. And you take 20% less damage from landmines. Guys, until you're about level 20 or 25, I would guess, um, standing on a landmine is pretty much instant death. You're going to die. It will kill you outright. I love leading zombies through fields of landmines and watching them do cartwheels. It's quite quite entertaining. Uh, loose board traps. So loose board traps, are, are, if you're in a building, there will be false floor, or not false floors, but broken floors. You walk on it, you can fall through it. And then you land in a basement full of angry zombies. It's not a pleasant experience. So this loose board trap will give you enough time to possibly move off the loose board trap. And um, then you can get, get to safety, perhaps. 
And the last one is uh, you're known as the infiltrator. And you can navigate the most dangerous minefields, loose port traps, and land ones trigger two seconds slower, and you take 50% less damage. Really nice. Animal tracker, this one, it depends on your build. If you're doing a lot of looting in buildings, they you're not going to use this all that often, but they have changed food in Alpha 19. You're not going to get as much food, especially if you're mining. Um, so this is going to be useful if you're doing a lot of uh, walking through like terrain and that kind of stuff. So it lets you detect and track animals within 100 meters and never go hungry. So the first level lets you find rabbits, snakes and chickens, which you can all kill and chop up for their meat. Uh, you can now detect deers and boars as sneaky predators like wolves and coyotes. Wolves are my nemesis next to boars. Boars are bad. And you can now detect mountain lions and bears. So if you want to go on like a ranger style build with archery and you live off the land, this is the skill for you. The penetrator. No jokes there. All right. So you spot the weak points in a target's armor and can use AP, which is armor piercing rifle bullet to shoot through and hit multiple organic targets. So there are certain zombies in the game that classify as armored zombies. The soldier is one, the biker is another because of their helmets. Okay, so ignores 15% of the armor with firearms, archery and spears. Perforator, pretty much the same thing. Uh, armor piercing rounds can penetrate an additional target or block or, and hit up to 500 hit points when using hunting, marksman, or sniper rifles. Puncture is pretty much the same thing. It's just up to 750 points. And then sniping rif uh, sniper rifles, sorry. And the last one ignores 35% and up to 1,000 hit points. That's, that kill most zombies outright. That is, that is potent. That is really good. All right, now we're getting to some of my personal favorites. I love looting. I love taking things apart. So Lucky Looter, you can see I've already put a point into here. Specialize in tracking down the mother load and maybe getting a little extra for your trouble, a little bit more where I'm from called Shilete or money. Right, so uh, you get a slim chance to find better loot. It's 5% to loot bonus for containers that you open personally. Looting is 10% faster. Potluck. Good Fortune, Blessed, and Lucky Looter. So you get it all the way down to Lucky Looter. You're on the roller and the dice is loaded. It's 25% loot bonus and looting is 80% fast. Now you can combine that with like some glasses and things that actually boost your looting uh, percentage. And you can actually get some really, really good loot. As I said, I spent a lot of time looting. So this one, I always, always take Lucky Looter. I always do. It's one of the first ones I take. Treasure Hunter. So this one is very useful if you get a uh, quest from the trader um, and you do a lot of buried uh, qu uh, buried treasure quests. So with a spoke, you can have to do without. So this one takes the 10 blocks, reduces to seven, and then reduce the ring. And you get 10% more items. It's also really nice. So every five blocks and 20%. And the last one, for every three blocks, you get 30%. So that is really, really handy if you are into treasure hunting, you do the trader quests, things like that. Because that's why I said in the beginning, there are so many skills here. It is not going to be possible for you to perk into every one of them. You need to pick which ones you think are going to be useful to you. But when we get to um, the next uh, one, strength, you'll see this uh, sexual Tyrannosaurus. And that's one of the ones that everybody goes for. Salvage operations. Waste not, want not. So, want not. Salvage items for more resources. So this one is when you're using wrenches. Uh, so you wrench cars, lights, computers, beds, whatever the case may be. You can make wrenches on level one. Um, where would it be? All right, so I'm guessing it's part, it's not specified here, uh, but once you get to Master Scavenger, you should be able to make uh, the, or I call it the, the DACA gun, but it is a, a impact driver. Where you can make the impact driver and then you can, if you've perked into level five and you've got a, a, a I think it's a level quality five or quality six uh, impact gun, you can strip a car in two seconds. That is huge. 
there's a there's the wrench and there's the crest not a crescent wrench but a ratchet that are new to this build our next skill is going to be strength Rawr. all right strength is the measure of your muscular might increasing your strength raises your headshot bonus and dismember chance with shotguns clubs and sledgehammers so depending if you're going for a club build or a sledgehammer this is the, the tree you want to perk into if you're going for spears and uh, that kind of thing you want perception so it starts at weakling then goes all the way down to olympic champion so once you get down to olympic champion you could be a living champion if the apocalypse hadn't crushed that dream now you can just crush the zombies deal 300 percent headshot damage and 50 percent chance to dismember with shotguns clubs and sledgehammers okay so the next one we're going to look at is your combat perks now your combat perks um or boomstick nothing boomstick is another name for your shotgun so the first level is your shotgun hobo so you can craft quality two shotguns that deal 10 percent more damage 20 percent faster fire rate and you can unlock double barrel shotgun crafting then you get the shotgun nomad the shotgun pro shotgun master and boomstick you have ascended to the legendary status of shotgun messiah as the last thing they see before meeting the maker, deal 50% more damage, 50% faster fire rate, and 30% faster reload. Take shots, crapple opponents. That with that auto shotgun, the new auto shotgun, oof, that's going to be potent. All right, so like you can see, level three stuns enemies for eight seconds. And you can see there, once you get to level four, you can now craft quality five shotguns, which is really cool. And it also unlocks pump action shotguns. Pummel Pete is for the people that like to play with clubs and things like that. So the iron club and baseball bats. So if tier one is a roughneck, you can car off quality two clubs and they deal 10% more damage. And power attacks have a 60% chance of knocking a foe back. And you can also unlock baseball bat crafting. Then you get up to thug big leagues stay down and pummel pete so pummel pete pummel pete once you took on 50 zombies with just a club and be proud of you deal 50 percent more damage attacks do 200 percent more damage to stun opponents and power attacks have a hundred percent chance to knock foes back down three successive hits in a short time will cause the last player to do a hundred percent extra damage so if you're playing with a club build this is the one for you skull crusher so this is sledgehammers. So specialize in destroying enemies and structures with sledgehammers. So the first one is bruiser. You're a bruiser with a little luck and sometimes knock down geriatric zombies. Craft quality two sledgehammers and deal 10% extra damage and 15% chance to knock enemies over. And now unlocks the iron sledgehammer for crafting. So then it goes mauler, smasher, bone breaker, and skull crusher. All right, so deal again deals 50% more, 75% to knock down, and you've got an extra 50% to knock down nearby foes. Bone Breaker is the one that lets you craft quality five stage hammers. Now we get the general strength perks. Now, one of the ones that most people playing will go for is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. So you can see I've already got there. This one's got four levels now. It used to have five. All right. So what this does, it reduces how much stamina your tools and your melee weapons use. Uh, by You can see their tools go, or melee goes um, down by 8% and your power attack down by 15%. And then once you get down to level 4, you're a cage gladiator. And then your, your stamina usage goes down by 25% and your power attacks by 50%. And if you kill somebody, your killing blow gets you 30 stamina points. Now, I can't state how good that actually is, guys. Having that extra stamina, you might not think it's all that much. But once you combine it with like a mega crush or some candy, things like that, woo, you'll be amazed how much mining you can do when you've got that to level four. It's, it's phenomenal. All right. My other one I tend to perk into is heavy armor because I like heavy armor. 
Um, I like being covered in steel uh, because how the armor system works, if you've got an armor rating of let's say 90, it will reduce all incoming damage by 90%. It's a really simple system. So if a zombie hits you for 10 damage, it will reduce nine of the 10 damage. So you'll only take one point of damage. Simple. So level one is Tin Man. You can craft two, level two, uh, poor, you can craft quality two poor heavy armor. Uh, it reduces your movement stamina penalty by 5%, increases your durability by 50%. And then you get heavy metal, iron man, and get tanked. You are now a walking tank. Craft quality 5 heavy armor. Reduced heavy armor movements and stamina penalty by 25%, and improved durability by 200%. So that is one thing you've got to take into account with wearing heavy armor versus like light armor. Light armor doesn't penalize you from movement and doesn't make as much noise, to be frank. Um, where heavy armor protects you more, but you make more noise and it encumbers you more. So you've got to take, you've got to see which play style. If you're playing a ninja, if you walk around at night and you're stealthy, don't wear heavy armor. It doesn't suit your play style. You're going to wear the light military grade stuff. Where you like this one, I'd be wearing steel. Once I get to level five, I'm going to be making a full set of steel. All right, pack mule. This one is another useful one, but it is uh, supplemented by uh, armor mods that you can put into your armor, which is something we'll cover later on. Not in this episode, but a f uh, following episode. So you can uh, modify that. So this one uh, unlocks the slots in your backpack. So this once you get three there, then you get three, 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 and then you once you get to a pack mill, you ca your whole backpack is unlocked, and then you can carry your whole backpack without being encumbered. Again, this you have to see what is your play style. Is this going to be useful to you or not? I generally put one or two points into this, and then I put the, the connectors into my armor, which will unlock, not the connectors, the storage mods into my armor that unlocks the rest of my backpack slots. Master Chef is another one I again tend to get early because I like cooking my own food. So the first one you get is your, your bachelor. You can cook bacon and eggs, boiled, grilled meats, baked potatoes, cornbread, teas, and coffee, and it cooks 10% faster. So are you going to live purely off canned food, or are you going to make your own food? Guys, this cooking has changed completely from Alpha 18. I can't stress this enough. It is a huge change. Once you get down to like Master Chef, Grandpa's ass kicking recipe. So you get stuff like a hearty stew. If you get like a, eat a hearty stew and drink a, a black strap coffee, man, it's ridiculous your stamina boost that you get. You can mine like you don't want to believe. You, the amount of power attacks you can put out. It's, it's really nuts. All right. So if you like your food, this is the way to go. Construction perks is another one I tend to max out both of these. So my mining 69er, uh, maximize your mining efforts by increasing tool damage to bring down rocks and trees faster. So this is one I tend to max out quite quickly because I like building bases and I like uh, digging. So this increases your damage to those. So it lets you craft quality two tools and increases your damage by 10 and block damage by 30%. And unlocks all iron tools like pickaxes. Then you got Johnny Newcomer, Muckman. A Muckman is another name for a tunnel digger. It's a really old term from like the 17 and 1800s. Boulder Buster and then Minus 69er. All right. So <laughs> your legendary Minus 69 is going to find the juicy center of any rock faster than any horny bullfrog. Increase the damage by 50% and rock damage by 150%. Once you get to this one, guys, you'll see. And you've got like a uh, steel pickaxe. Boulders, you hit them two, three times, they, they shatter. It's really, really good. Mother load, this one, if you're digging, mining, this is the one you're going to spec into first. Because check this out. From level one, you get 20% more ore, stone, terrain blocks, and trees. So instead of getting, say, five wood, you're now getting, what's that, seven wood? You can see how that's going to stack up over time quite phenomenally. So once you go through main vein, struck gold, gold mine, and mother load, you're doubling what you're getting out of everything. I cannot stress, if you're building a massive base, you need to do this. It's not even a question. 
Right, so next one up is fortitude. It's a measure of your physical resilience. And so if you're dealing with fists or with your pew pews, I uh, can't say certain words, guys. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like it much. All right, so you start at level one, sickly health, and you go all the way down to level 10, which is exuberant fortitude. And so it increases your health as well. Your 300% and 50%. So let's get straight into your combat perks. Your first one is Brawler. So this is if you are playing with your fists. I don't often do this, if ever. Um, I prefer to shoot or skewer or stab things than punch them in the with my fists. It is something you can do if you want. So again, five levels, Bully. Uh, so it lets you craft quality two poor knuckled weapons and do 10% more damage. And punches to the head negate your infection ability. So if you punch a, head in the, a zombie in the head, it okay, can't infect you, which is kind of nice. Then it goes all the way down to Mixed Martial Artists. Uh, you are now a complete Mixed Martial Artist and a registered lethal weapon. Deals 50% more damage and you have a high chance to explode enemy heads with punches. All right, so again, punches, if you like playing that, there are knuckle wraps and things like that you can build with this. All right, so Machine Gunners, one of the ones I really like as well. Be a commando using the assault rifle to slow your foes. Again, five levels. Same principle here, guys. Level one, Grant lets you. Craft quality two weapons. So machine guns did get a new gun as well. So you can unlock the AK at level one. Uh, then you get uh, Commando Adrenaline at level three. And then level four, you finally get the Tactical Assault Rifle, which is essentially a M4 um, for you to craft. A machine gunner. You're now the ultimate machine gunner. Do 50% more damage, 25% more fire rate, and reload 30% faster. Each shot scored with automatic weapons gives you six damage. That's really nice. Okay, survival perks. Now these ones I tend to pick off, uh, not pick off, but pick certain ones of these. Like if I'm doing archery, um, I tend to go the huntsman as well because it helps they go hand in hand with each other. Specialized in hunting prey and harvesting more meat, bone and leather. So this one, if you're living off the land and you're not uh, getting um, like canned food and things like this, it's also uh, useful because you get a lot more meat and fat and leather from animals. So pelter, poacher, hunter, butcher, and the huntsman. So again, at level five, you get 100% more resources using any bladed tool or weapon. So there's daggers, the axes, bone ships, things like that. Well insulated is another good one. If you're going to live in the desert or you're planning to live in the cold bio, you want this. So you're mildly weather uh, resistant. Uh, you gain 10 insulation and you use 15% less food and water to when cold or overheating. So if you're overheating, you lose more water. If you're cold, you lose more food. And you can now handle severe weather and typically could care less what the weather conditions are. You'll never have more than severe stages of temperature status effects. So once you there, you get hot and then you get uh, like heat stroke. Once you get heat stroke, your water starts dropping like a rock and so does your stamina. It's a real, it's actually a problem in the desert. All right, the next one, living off the land. This one lets you farm. So if you want to grow your own food, here we go. So level one uh, is gardener. So harvest two items from wild or planted crops, craft seeds for flowers and decorative plants like goldenrod, chrysanthemum, aloe, and yucca. And farm plots cost 30% uh, less to craft. Um, now, level two is farmer. You can craft seeds for berries and vegetables. And farm, class, farm plots cost 50% less to craft. And that's your farmer. Craft. Oh, craft. Harvest three items from wild or planted crops. So if you want to do farming, this is what you want. Pain tolerance. So specialize in shrugging off blows, fighting through the pain, staying down in the fight, staying in the fight where others will be down for the count. You think you're tough because you are. You don't have a glass jaw anymore. Reduce HP loss by 5%. So if you take like heavy armor plus this, man, you're gonna be you're gonna be literally a walking tank because how, how much less damage they're gonna to take to get through to you. So there's tough, rugged, durable, masochist, and iron chin. All right. 
You see, to thrive on pain, now position iron chin. Reduce HP loss by 25% and no chance to get stunned. Guys, the amount of times I've been killed because I've been stunned. Oof. It's lots. It's not fun. All right, healing factor. This one was tweaked a lot from Alpha 18 to Alpha 19. Alpha 18, it was quite overpowered. Because you could get this, once you put enough points in, you would just heal. You didn't really need to do anything. All right, so level one, fast metabolism. You gain one health every 90 seconds with natural healing. Critical injuries, heal 20% faster. Now, this is where I'm going to introduce the ISS system, which is, so the more you get hit in seven days that are currently, you take more and more damage until something bad happens. If you keep getting pummeled in the arm, there's a chance your arm can break. Or if you fall off a log that's high enough and you break a leg, that is what they call a critical injury. Now to heal that, you need to heal it properly using the correct method. So if you've got a broken limb, you need to put a splint on it. If it's a severe laceration, you need to put a bandage on it. If it's a concussion, you've got to do something else for it. So there are different injuries that require specific methods of healing. It's one of the biggest changes from Alpha 18 to Alpha 19. All right, so there you go. Quick healer, animal, regeneration, and mutant genes. All right, you must have mutant genes from all that radiation. Gain one health every six seconds with natural healing, and critical injuries heal twice as fast. That is amazing. It is really, really good. All right, but the big thing is you can't be starving. If you're starving, you will not heal yourself. So just be aware of that. So once you get like this, pain tolerance and heavy armor, man, you're a walking tank. And gut. This one is um, going to help you with your food and eating and then things like that. Because you're in the, in the apocalypse and there's a lot of rotten food around, there is chance of getting dysentery or runny stomach or upset stomach, whatever you want to call it. So reduce food and water loss from physical exertion by 5%. And hold your breath for 84 seconds. Chance of dysentery is reduced by 1%. And bus from consumables lost 10% longer. So if you eat candy or purified water, things like that, it will last 10% longer. So then we get strong constitution, great metabolism, intrinsic immunity, and iron gut. So the last one you can see there, hold your breath for three minutes. Wow. Uh, reduce your food and water loss from physical exertion by 25%. And your... Chance of dysentery is reduced by 5% and your bust loss 50% faster. So if you're a miner, say you're playing a team game and you're just the miner, that's all you enjoy doing, get on gut along with uh, sexual Tyrannosaurus and mother load in minor 69er and you're going to be mining up a storm. Guarantee it. And the last one here is cardio. So train your, your body in the number one tactic against the zombie menace running away from them. That's true. This game, you're going to run, and you're going to run a lot. So level one, a hiker. Uh, you increase your stamina regen by 10% when sprinting, running man and triathlete. So up to 30% regen when sprinting. That is useful. You don't think 30%, think ah. You'll be amazed how much of a difference that makes. It really, really does make a huge difference. So agility is the measure of your athletic prowess. So let's have a look at this one. Again, 10 levels, starting at clumsy, ending at parkour master. So this one is the one you want if you're using bows, handguns, and knives. So that's when I first started. Remember I said there's too many skills for you to perk into everything. That's why you need to pick which ones you want. If you want bows, this, then focus on bows in here, but you don't only have to focus bows. You can go for a bows and say assault rifles or handguns and knives or, you know, whatever you want. So let's look at the first one is archery. Master use of bows and crossbows. Uh, you can craft uh, quality two poor bows. Locks the wooden bow and iron crossbow crafting. Then archer, marksman, hair sp splitter, and ranger. Uh, let's just see if there's anything special here. No, not really. All right, so again, just 50% more damage and 50% faster aim. Gunslinger, so if you are uh, wanting to use pistols, there is a new pistol. There is the Desi Yol 44, and there is the new... Um, 
the revolver got reworked as well. Uh, unlocks pistol crafting, and then you get outlaw, sheriff, gunfight, and gunslinger. Uh, critical damage, three successive hits in a short time cause the last shot to do 100% extra damage. Really nice. Um, <clears throat> just want to see... Okay, level four is where you get your quality five weapons. Again, you cannot craft quality six guns or items. You have to find them or buy them from a trader, but that's going to cost you a small fortune. So deep cuts, if you like using knives or machetes. Machetes are really cool. Uh, so again, so you can actually bleed zombies. That's another thing they've introduced. You can bleed zombies for damage. They do have a minor effect on them, but they're not going to be squirting blood in like a movie or an anime or something like that. It's a minor, minor thing. You actually have to really look for it to even see it. But zombies can bleed in this. And yes, we had big fights on the forum about the whole concept of a bleeding zombie. But hey, I've got vultures circling me because I make locations. So doll played, knife guy, fence, swordsman, and a samurai. So there you go. You can inflict up to seven bleeding wounds on an enemy and power attack inflicts five. Glancing blows cause one bleeding wound and enemies run 20% slow while bleeding. So if you like your machetes and things like this, this is the one you want. All right, athletics perks, run and gun. Okay, so pretty much as it says, improves your hip fire accuracy and run faster while reloading any ranged weapon. So spray and pray, twitch fingers and trigger man. So the last level can reduce your penalty by 25%. Oh, sorry, it increases your fire accuracy by 25% and you have no movement penalty while reloading. That's quite good. Flurry of blows. So this one, if you are doing like brawling your fists or knives and machetes or stun batons, um, go get this one. So if you're especially doing fists uh, with the knuckle dusters and things like that, make sure you go for flurry of, a flurry of blows because it, it really, really helps fill out your character quite a lot. And then you go up to level three here. Again, this was level five, but they reduced it by two ranks. And each kill recharges your stamina by 30 points. That's why I said this one, is because boxing and that uses a lot of stamina, compared to like shooting, obviously. So this one is a really, really good one. Here's where your light armor comes in. So squire, militant, knight, and gladiator. Uh, so this one elects unlocks leather and then sure okay so you don't get military fiber through this one okay you can craft uh, quality five at level four again and your light armor movement penalty is reduced by 75 percent and your stamina penalty by 50 percent that is really nice parkour this one if you like falling off high places all right, so if even level one increases your fall this fall, your safe fall distance by one meter and reduces your stamina cost of jumping by 10%, I tend to fall off a lot of things. So I should actually spend more points in parkour because once you get to parkour monster, a uh, master, um, it's actually quite nuts. You can navigate difficult situations, reduces your stamina cost by jumping by 40%, increases safe and fall damage by five meters, and can jump two meters high and never get a sprained or broken leg while falling. All right. So you can kill yourself, but you can't break a leg. So this one is also another hugely useful one. Stealth perks, hidden strike. So this is if you like playing at night or not being making noise while you're playing. So this is really good at that kind of thing. So cutthroat, you're a cutthroat who prefers to operate from the shadows and use stealth and sneak attacks. Sneak attacks deal an extra 50% damage. So in every point of interest, they're going to be sleeping zombies. And if you don't make any noise and you can hit them with that, man, you can do a huge amount of damage to them. And there you go. 250% extra damage. So if you're using a bow or a knife or a machete and you walk up behind a zombie or sneak up behind him and you hit him with that, you're going to kill him or her. Right, from the shadows, sneaking around the dark makes less noise in general. So lurker, hiding in shadows is 13% more efficient. Uh, hide in the shadows is 13% more efficiently. 
Noises from actions are muffled 10% and sneak movement is 10% faster. Enemies will search for you for up to 50 seconds. So if you like building at night or things like this, this is another good one for that. Then you've got Shadower, Stalker, Prowler and Shadow Ninja. Hide in the shadow is 65% more effectively. Noises from actions are muffled 50% and sneak movement is 50% faster. Enemies will search for you up to 20 seconds so you can blend into those shadows. Okay, the last one we're going to look at in our skills tree is intellect. So intellect covers anything to do with science, building things, things of that nature. So again, so headshot damage by intellect is governed weapons such as robotic turrets and stun batons. So if you like the stun batons or you want to use ro turrets, I tend to use turrets in my base defense. So I spend a lot of my points in the intellect tree. So again, 10 ranks. So it starts at level 1 to level 10, level 10 is Mastermind, and you're 300% and 50% damage. You can see it follows a pattern generally. Uh, then we got Combat Perks, we've got Electrocutioner. So this Electrocutioner deals specifically with the Stun Baton. So low voltage, and then it goes all the way up to Electrocutioner, 50% uh, more damage, and Stun Victims 100% lo longer. So I like the Stun Baton. I haven't used them in Alpha 19 yet. I, I'm planning to to try it out. I didn't like it much in in um, Alpha 18. I found it quite to be a weak weapon, but they have changed it in this one to be a bit more of an efficient weapon. So we'll see. Robotics Inventor. You're fascinated with robotics. Learn to use and craft deployed weapons. So these are the new turrets the robotic turrets that you can make or pick up so there's a junk sledge that was introduced and the drone uh, turret that was introduced in this one so you can see there level one uh, and robot unlocks robotics crafting and then you can see it improves things you can craft fair quality uh, robots and robots active range is 15 meters um all right, and then unlocks robotic tarot crafting. And then once you get to robotics experts, they two deployed uh, robots can be active at once. So if you've got two automatic turrets that use the junk junk ammunition, you can have two of those going at the same time in a whole night. You'll be amazed how much of a difference those two, especially on the early nights, you, they really, really help. Um, I tend to always have a one with me. Okay, so better barter. This, so this one helps a lot when you're dealing with traders. So if you're play, building a playthrough that you're going to be trading a lot, specialize a lot of your points into here. So you've got wheeler dealer. So as soon as you put first point into here, it automatically improves the secret stash of the traders. And you get 5% off, which is not bad. So you get salesman, sales manager, Wall Street tycoon, and a corporate marketing CEO. You are like a corporate manager and buy goods at the lowest prices and sell for a huge profit. Get a 30% deal when buying when buy. Get a 30% better deal when buying and selling with traders. S traders, secret stash shows the best loot. So if you want to get the best things like uh, solar panels, for instance, solar panels are a nightmare to get, but they offer you free electricity to charge batteries. So there is that. So go for that. Uh, the Daring Adventurer. So this one gets you better quest rewards. So these two tend to go hand in hand with each other. So Looter gets an additional choice and 5% more Dukes. Plunderer, uh, two additional choice rewards and 10%. Mercenary and Daring Adventure. You can now choose two quest rewards and 20% more Dukes. So my next build will probably start with a Daring Adventure because I want to make sure I don't tend to use the trader a lot, but I want to change that up in this alpha. In alpha 18, I almost never used the trader, to be honest. I just didn't want to. Charismatic nature. This one only really applies to multiplayer if you're playing on a multiplayer server. Um, because you can see here, people get inspired when they're near you. Nearby ally is going 20% health and stamina when near you. If you're playing by yourself, don't get this. It's not going to benefit you anything. So it's it's useful if you're playing multiplayer with your friends or people online, 
but don't bother it if you're playing by yourself. There is no point to this one. It's what they should they should actually change this one a little bit to be able to make it more effective for like single player people. Um maybe it improves something with the trader again or I, I don't know, I'm not the game dev, but it's for me it's a useless skill because I, I never play with friends. I'm too busy recording. Okay, the last one. This is where I spend nearly all my points, to be honest. So medicine, so that lets you heal yourself. So you can craft, that's a change. Chemistry stations used to be level two, I think. I think. Uh, healing kits. So if you want to make bandages, uh, plaster casts, splints, things like that. And this is changed because of the new ISS. That's obvious. The... So, gain further 2% more XP when using bandages, first aid bandages, first aid kits, splints, and can craft chemistry stations, first aid bandages, and plaster cards. Doctors, uh, first aid bandages, first aid kits, and splints. Surgeons, and first aid kits, and steroids. Uh, Ford bites, recog, and antibiotics. Mm, they've changed that. Antibiotics used to be really easy to make. They've now made it level 4. That changes things quite a lot. All right. The other one, Fort Bites Recog, are really helpful as well in specific situations. Advanced Engineering. If you like building stuff instead of looting everything, I love building things. So, uh, this, this I unlock normally level one or two I put into this. All right. So you're now able to forge iron and other metal objects. Craft uh, forges and craft items with 20% faster. Craft glue cheaper. Guys, one thing I can get is specify get all the zombie bodies all the carcasses you can get you need as many bones as possible because you need the bones to make glue trust me on that you'll never have enough glue in this ever because glue makes duct tape and in <laughs> the die duct tape makes the world go round right so tinkerer uh, then you can make cement mixes with that uh, electrical traps from level three and forged steel. Um, yeah, that just basically reduces your things and more XP again. Advanced engineer. Uh, okay, so level you need it level five to make for uh, to make a crucible. It's a really annoying thing to do, but sorry. Okay, so once you get to level five, you learn to craft auto SMG turrets. And crucibles to forge steel. Now, crucibles are really annoying to get. In my previous playthrough, I spent a day 18 without finding one. I was driving me absolutely batty. I couldn't find one in a trader. I couldn't find one in loot. I couldn't build one because I didn't have enough points. Because you need like 10 intellect to get to this. So it was really frustrating for me. Eventually, I found one, but I, that was quite late in the game. So forges, if you want to make steel, you need a crucible. It's it's how it works, which makes sense. It's how it works in real life as well. So if you want to make steel, you need a crucible, and this is the way you get it. Or you can buy it, or you can find it, or you can get the the schematic for it. All right. So grease monkey, if you want to build vehicles, this is the way for you. So bicycles, mini bikes, motorcycles, grease monkey is your your four by four. And avionics, if you want to craft a gyrocopter. A gyrocopter is hugely fun to fly, but it is not that easy to fly. It flies counterintuitive to the way you think it would work. Uh, these ones, as soon as you can get a bicycle, guys, I suggest you do it. It helps you loot a lot faster, and you can run away from zombies. What are we doing in this game? We run away from zombies. Okay, so next one up is going to be our books. Okay, now everybody, I'm not going to go through each individual book in here. They are literally two pages with seven titles each. So you can see there's a huge number of books here, and they all do different things. Um, you'll find books, you can't craft them, you can buy them, or you can find them in loot. Uh, so we'll focus on one or two of them. So Art of Mining. So level one. Adds a small chance to mine rare gems from all like gold and silver, no, diamond and silver. Um, then you can see craft diamond to or blade mods for tools that increase dramatically increases durability. That one, if you find that, oh, 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 oh. Um, so you can see there 
can craft black syrup, a super strong coffee. Um, and then you go all the way down. And once you get all the books, it adds an extra bonus. So once you get all the seven, it adds something extra. So learn how to craft lanterns and mining helmets. Has a 20% chance to one shot any ore. So if you're mining like iron, for instance, and you've got all seven of these, you, there is a chance you, one in five chance, that's another way of saying it, one in five chance that you'll hit it once and it'll break. So that is really, really good. Um, so the, it all depends on what you want to go for or what you find. Another really good one is like the Great Heist. So this one deals with uh, like lock picks, things like that. So once you get all seven again, learn how to craft lock picks and break into the safes 20% fast and a 10% lower chance of break to break your lock pick. You cannot get this special ability any other way. You have to have all seven. You can't do it any other way. Lucky Looter, find more junk loot, more brass, more lead. Uh, there is one that is actually really good. Uh, is it Wasteland Treasures? Yes. All right, Wasteland Treasures. You see book number seven, harvest more lead and brass from sinks. There's another one here. Okay, the honey from trees, really good as well. Uh, purify mineral water, good. This level five, guys, wow. If you can find this level five when it changes your game because doorknobs are brass. And what are bullet shells made out of? Brass. Another thing you never have enough of in this is brass. So um, good luck finding that. So the books, as I said, there are a lot of them. There's over a hundred books here. So I think there's actually, after Alpha 19, I think there's closer to 200 books in this in this list so i'm not going to go through each book we will be here the whole night if i did that wow that was a recording session and a half thank you so much for hanging around so long um yeah that was a monster if you like the video please give it a two big thumbs up share it far and wide and do give it a bit of love and uh, do hit that subscribe button. So in the next video, we're going to be covering sch uh, schematics. We haven't covered schematics, but that will be a separate video. Our next video is going to be on building your first base, which will be a little bit shorter than this one. This one was, as I mentioned, a very deep dive into your skill trees and books. So as always, keep well, and I'll see you again soon.